welcome on in everybody to auburnundercover.com. Nathan King here with Jason Caldwell here at Jordan Hare Stadium. Jason, I mean, that momentum Auburn thought it had, thought it could build up after the Kentucky game, well, it lasts less than a week. Auburn comes home, another uh, really disappointing loss for this team, 17 to seven at the hands of Vanderbilt. Jason, I mean, first off, talking about the defensive performance here, it's one that it really went to waste because they did a great job against Diego Pavia until the drive that drove the dagger in. And uh, Vanderbilt did a great job of limiting possessions in the second half. But, man, they, they gave this offense so many opportunities and they just weren't able to take it. Yeah, back. and, you know, you're right. I mean, uh, you look at the defense and you go, man, they played so well. But then you look at the defense and you go, you have four critical penalties on the, yeah. that extended drives. A couple of those on the last one. You had, you had a couple of them early, too, where you, you, you allowed them to extend drives and go down to get points. One led to a field goal. One led to a touchdown. And, uh, and those are huge plays. Other than that, I mean, it's hard to have a better day defensively than Auburn did, other than creating turnovers. Yeah, that's the one thing we talked to Dory Mosey, and he said, "Look, we didn't create enough turnovers." And you know, they get the ball. You know, you're going to have to find some kind of edge because Vandy, if they ever get a toehold, they're just going to keep grinding. And we saw that in the most critical of moments today. Um, Auburn defense, though, it's hard to do much better than they did. Yeah, Auburn had Auburn was winning time of possession, um, and then you look at what Vanderbilt did. They got the ball um, there in the fourth quarter, and it, we were all just sort of wondering how much time are they going to take they off, get off here. The field? I mean, it, it, and, and like Jason said, um, a critical call where maybe the officials missed offensive pass interference. That's certainly what DJ Durkin thought. And then you would have had an opportunity to get the ball back after that field goal try, a leverage call on Keldrick Falk, which means that the player propelled himself off of his own teammate. Hugh Freeze obviously did not agree with no. that call one bit after the uh, after the game, but that allowed Vandy number one chew off even more time, and number two plunge the ball into the end zone with a short uh, short touchdown pass. I mean, Jason, you know, I thought they did a good job against against Pavia in this game. Um, Auburn's quarterback play was shaky, and there were a few moments here and there missed throws in this game Couple. for Peyton Thorne. And uh, I mean, really, just he talked about it after the game. It's what we've seen all season: lack of execution, particularly when you move across midfield and you're in scoring position. Yeah, big, big moments again today. You look and Vandy. I mean, we got probably only had nine completions. Yep. But he made a couple of really big throws when they had to have them. Auburn didn't make those plays. And you look down there, er, er, Luke Deal throw early on. I thought it yep. was a great design play. Miss a wide open tight end in the middle. That's probably a 40, 50 yard gain if you connect on that pass. And then a couple of plays down there late. But you know, it was a combination of things and. When you boil down to it, you look at Auburn's offense and you go, Dark West Hunter had 10 carries at halftime. He finished with 12. And then we asked Keith Freeze, like, hey, was he injured? We saw him at the end of the game. He was catching passes. Vandy, I think to their credit, said, look, we're going to say you're going to have to throw the ball to beat us. And Auburn tried to run it some, but they did it in, with, with you know, Jeremiah Cobb and Demari Austin right. in the game together, some different things. And I thought, man, this is the perfect opportunity in a one-possession game to grind it out with your best player. Auburn didn't do it. No. Um, and the offensive line did not play particularly well. I honestly, and, I, and I, I wrote it today, I honestly thought, I thought Vanderbilt was better on both lines of scrimmage than Auburn was. And yep. I never in my lifetime would have envisioned that I would say that or write it, but I did today. Yeah, first time in anyone's lifetime that Vanderbilt has won inside Jordan Hare Stadium. They had only played nine games here previously, uh, but they, they get the win here today. Yeah, I mean, Jarquez Hunter, 278 yards at Kentucky. Again, credit to Vanderbilt being able to take him away. I mean, it, it was just an inconsistent game all all around. Something that we've, you know, unfortunately for Auburn, come to expect this season. I thought maybe some you know questionable decisions here and there. Um, just nothing working for this team. They thought they would be able to perhaps catch some momentum. They were seven and a half point favored in this game. Jason, all of a sudden, you know, I know people were talking after the game. You know, oh, you got to win out to win a bowl game or to get to a bowl game. I mean, it just it, it, it just doesn't seem feasible at this point. At this not point, not based on just, what we've seen, right? Not based on what we've seen, but you've just got to try to pick yourself up and. Uh, and give yourself an opportunity to go into the offseason with any sort of momentum rather than, I mean, you, you can't end the year getting blown out at home by AM and getting blown out in the Iron No, Bowl. no, and, and they haven't done that to this point. No, Nobody no. has done those things to this team, um, but we also haven't seen the end of this. And this is this one felt, you know, it felt like, an, and, and again, I talked about Dory Mosey, but when Keldry Fall gets called for that penalty, it felt like you, you burst a bubble inside Jordan-Hare Stadium because yep. you get a stop, you're still in the game, it's a six-point game, all of a sudden you go, boom, well, you know they're going to score now and that's right. going to be it. And it, that's kind of what it felt like. And I, I don't know, um, I don't know what you what you do now. You got And you've got a bye week at a really bad time because now you have a week to kind of go think about these things, deal with it, move on. And so um, for this Auburn team, you got to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and 
it's felt like, and, I, and I, we've written Deja Vu all over again all yeah. season long. I don't think I can write it again. It's just what it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's at a certain point in the season, and maybe we were already at this point, but you wondered what would happen in terms of momentum after the Kentucky game. At a certain point, that is what your team becomes, and, and that is the team you are. Auburn's an inconsistent team, um, probably going to be heading toward a losing record, and obviously a lot of work for this team to do heading into coming off the bye week and heading into year three um, under Hugh Freeze. For Jason Caldwell, I am Nathan King. Keep it locked at AuburnUndercover.com for coverage throughout the rest of the afternoon and into Sunday. We'll talk to you all later.